Um, I am Shanton Kouré. Uh, I'm working for Mind in Belgium as a Linux uh, a consultant for MIDI systems. Uh, so today, uh, just a short talk about uh, how updating uh, Yocto layers in the embedded system context because nowadays we have to support our firmware longer for different reasons, for ecological reasons, for legal reasons also. And so it's becoming important to be able to do this thing during the lifetime of the product. And it's not also a simple task to perform, which can require some time. So that's why I will share a bit my experience about it, because I, I think it can help you. And if you think this uh, team is really happy, in fact, this picture was taken before making the update. So that's why. Um, so uh, before starting the process, it's better to prepare this step uh, to win some time. and I. Avoiding some common issues, in fact, and spending time for nothing. So, in the preparation, it's better to have obviously a complete testing setup to be able to test all of your uh, features, which can be in software but also with the hardware, because a lot of regressions can happen here, and it's really important to be able to test to test everything in automatic or manual uh, way. And in the meantime, you can prepare also a kind of file to have the complete list of tests to perform to be sure that, okay, everything is correctly covered. I have not missed any major features because this covering regressions uh, in production is not uh, really good uh, for a major customer. And also, it's better to have a bit of time in front of you. This task is not like uh, updating Fedora or Debian. It's not just uh, some commands and two hours after it, everything is up to date. You need at least several weeks, but it can be several months or longer for BSP layer. So really be sure that the management is uh, aware of it, because for small company, it's uh, costly, in fact, to, to do this task. And to prepare it, it's better to read the release notes of major components that you are using, can be libraries, but your to itself, a bit of kernel subsystem eventually, uh, this kind of thing, because in general, they are describing the breaking changes and you can anticipate, ah, okay, this point can be an issue, so I have to take a look uh, during the migration. And sometimes they are giving some uh, advice also to be able to port to the new version, so it's really important to win some time at this step. And you have to decide also to which version you want to use. You can move to from long-term support version to another one, or eventually you can move to an intermediate release, depends on uh, what is your frequency, the BSP support, etc. But at least you can skip some releases if you want to win some time uh, because you have less tests to perform, of course. But it's not mandatory. Uh, just be aware that when you are skipping uh, releases, you have more changes to handle and maybe more regressions to fix. So the first thing you will discover is that when you are making an update of Yocto, it's, Yocto is not backward compatible at all, in fact. Uh, each release is introducing a lot of regressions and changes, and you have to fix them in your uh, layer. Uh, so for example, recently in the Unistar release, it changed completely the override mechanism uh, syntax from underscore to colon uh, character. So, Thankfully, they provided a script to help you to make this migration. So that's why reading the release notes is uh, important because making that manually is taking a lot of time for nothing. But it's not perfect. You have to review the result because there are some false positive and some missing pieces. So it's better to have a look also. But you can have also uh, a lot of little changes like variables which are added, renamed, removed. So if you are using them, you have to uh, take care of it, of course. But it can be also for recipes, which can be renamed or removed uh, sometimes, or the classes also. So you need to follow everything and try to identify these kind of issues, of course. 
And sometimes it's not related to the naming or what is available. It's about the behavior itself, which can be an issue. For example, in a Kirsten release, they introduce a, a feature to, in fact, disable the network for all tasks except do fetch by default. But maybe your recipes are using a network request in other tasks, so you have to use a specific command to enable it or eventually rewrite a bit your recipe. So you have to take care of that. And it can be difficult to discover it uh, without reading the documentation, for example. And sometimes the issue is not coming from Yocto directly. It can be related to external parties. Uh, for example, Python uh, stops the support of Python 2 and of of course, Yocto follows this decision, so it means if you are using a Python 2 script or so piece of software, you have to port them to Python 3, or eventually using an external layer for that, which is, of course, taking some time. But the issue is not coming only from Yocto itself. In general, we are using BSP layer to have a correct hardware integration in your system. And also, you are, they are providing some release notes for that uh, to describe what they, they have changed. And in general, it's not backward compatible also. For example, with uh, SMicroelectronics uh, updates uh, once, they changed completely how the clock and power management was uh, initialized at boot step, which means that the old bootloader is not able to boot the new kernel, which can be an issue because updating a bootloader is not a reliable and simple task in general, so it can be an issue for some projects. And sometimes, yes, uh, you need a specific firmware which is now out of three, so you, are, uh, you need to add a specific package uh, in your image to be able to use it. Or uh, a lot of projects are also uh, designing their board uh, based on a uh, vendor's uh, development kit and reusing a bit the device with, with some overriding mechanism. And quite often, uh, uh, vendors are refactoring their uh, device switch to support new boards. And in general, you have to follow uh, uh, them and making some custom changes to be able to work again. In general, it's not a lot of complex tasks, but it takes some time to identify them and to fix it correctly, and you need a lot of testing for that. And another problem is not from Yocto and their layers, because Yocto is making integration of a lot of components. External parties are making breaking changes as well. And you know the kernel is moving pretty fast. There is a stable uh, ABI, but not a stable internal API at all. So it means that when you are making out of three drivers or making some custom patches, you need quite often to adapt them to be able to compile against the new kernel and to work well. And sometimes it's not straightforward. But sometimes the issue is not coming directly from your out of three patches and uh, drivers. It just you are using a driver, but the behavior of the driver change. For example, for NXP, uh, to write the fuses uh, to put the MAC address in your manufacturing process, the driver change quite a lot. Instead of writing in CSFL files the right value, we have to uh, write it in a character device, so it's a different way to do that. It's not a big deal, but of course, you are losing some time to do that. So. These kind of things are making the update a bit harder for a small team. But in general, we can deal with it. And other components can have also uh, breaking changes. Not only the kernel, can be the rest of the ecosystem or the tool chain itself. For example, OpenSSI introduced some big changes in their API, so if you are using them directly in your piece of software, you need to follow the new API, of course. Or you can have uh, some uh, new C flags by default, which are stricter with a new GCC version. So your uh, application is not uh, compiled uh, um, from scratch. You have to adapt it a bit. 
how the configuration of some components can be changed and not backward compatible also for example system D boot change a bit or the default entry is ordered and it means if you are using your older configuration it's not working um, as expected anymore and you have to adapt it also so to be able to identify this kind of issues you need a lot of testing and be really serious with that and applying these kind of changes but i think we can do um, things better in fact to reduce a bit the effort during the update process one thing we can do is trying to upstream everything sometimes it's not always possible but trying to put recipes or drivers and other patches uh, to official projects, it's pretty important because when these projects are making breaking changes, it's up to these maintainers to adapt the code and not up to you or your team. So it's easier for you because in case of update, everything is normally done, so it's uh, better for you. It's also a way to return the flavor to open source project. In general, we are using them for free. And yeah, it's a way to give our time and to try to improve them instead of just consuming uh, their, their features. And it's a way sometimes also to receive some bug fixes. So for example, I upstream some drivers and after the kernel update, yes, we receive in the meantime some bug fixes from external parties which were, were relevant for us. So it was a win-win situation, in fact, uh, to do the upstream in that context. And for your own application, for your embedded system, you can try to compile on regular basis and get a recent distribution like Fedora, etc., to have a recent toolchain and uh, libraries. And in that case, you can detect the incompatibilities uh, during the development time instead of waiting the uh, update process to discover uh, breaking changes. So that is for me. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.